Hello, everybody. This is DFS Chan coming to you here live on July, uh, June 8th to talk about tomorrow's games on June 9th. As it was the case the last couple of videos, we have a special guest here. What's your name? Palmer. Oh, yeah, Palmer. Do you have any message for the viewers? Yes. Okay, give me one second. Boys and girls, like it, subscribe. Hello, everybody. Um, sorry, I had to put my son to bed. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining. Um, let me turn on my camera if I can. There you go. Okay, so let's see. Let me blur my video. There you go. Um, so I'll make this pretty quick since it's I'm kind of uploading this kind of late. Um, so we have AL versus NIP. NIP is a favorite at minus 230. Um, I don't know exactly what the odds are right now. Um, but yeah, I think NIP is gonna win this. Um, just based on looking at the metrics. Um, the total kills over under is 20 set at 23, which is the lowest among the three LPL games. Um, so for, for what it's worth, um, take a look at that. And then um, NIP leads has an advantage in every single of the one of these metrics that I saw, um, including the jungle EGPM. Um, I do think Shadow, yeah, Shadow is starting again at jungle. And I do think he was better than, um, he's been better than um, XLB who got subbed in for Shadow the other day. Um, so I do think this will help or give NIP the best chance to win. Xiao Hao, on the other hand, I think had a pretty good series last time out, and he cried after the game I saw um, that he won, and he was so happy about it. Um, but nonetheless, I think AL's roster is kind of shit. You see iBoy starting at 80 carry. I mean, you know, they beat Thunder Talk. They should be happy, but I'm not a believer in iBoy. I think Fotek is going to eat him alive, in my opinion. Um, I just don't think iBoy really fits the meta. Um, I think he... I guess he kind of fits the meta just by farming and going to late game, but even in team fights, I'm not a huge believer in him. Um, I just don't think his mechanics are very good. Um, and then Harder is starting now at, 80, uh, at mid position for anyone's legend. Um... Pins has been benched, um, and Harder is starting. Um, I just from last year's knowledge, Harder is not that good of a mid, mid laner, so I'm not too scared of that. And Angel has been underwhelming as well in terms of performance. Um, so I think it's just gonna be a shit matchup in the mid lane. But I do think the difference is gonna be Shadow and then um, Invincible has been playing really, really well. So like kind of like how we saw this morning with Rare Adam with Xiao Xu being the highest <laughs> scorer, I think Invincible, I'm not saying Invincible is the highest scorer on the slate as a top laner. That's like really, really rare um, for that to happen. But I do think Invincible has to be included in your core um, stack if you are using an IP in your lineup. Um, I like his matchup against ZDZ, who's been struggling. Just looking at the metrics, that Invincible has the highest um, EGPM difference and the biggest advantage uh, as a result um, individually. So I like I like him to be included. But yeah, so like like I said, I think NIP wins this. Um, I'm not a believer in iBoy and Harder. Now, Xiao Hao, I like him a lot, but I think Shadow has his numbers. Um, just looking at the metrics as well. So I like I like an IP to win. I don't think I'm gonna have any exposure to anyone's legend, but that also means yeah, they give you leverage. All right, TES versus Thunder Talk is the next one. Um, we see Wayward um keeps starting in the top top lane position, which is good. Um, and then Thunder Talk, we see one XN starting again. Um, after he got benched for Huan Feng. Huan Feng got benched now. He is being benched um, in favor of 1XN. I like 1XN better. Huan Feng, has, I think he's a little washed up at this point in his career. And just looking at the metrics, um, I'm not a believer in Huan Feng. Um, I think 
one XN gives TT the best chance to win. Um, kind of meshing well with Beichuan the other day. I think it was like a couple weeks ago when I watched him play. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is an interesting one. Um, I think TT is playable even despite the Vegas odds um, and despite the public image of Thunder Talk. Um, looking at the metrics, they were pretty close, like in terms of like even the jungle EGPM between Tian and Beichuan. I know Thunder Talk has lost some bad games. I think they lost to FPX and AL, um, but they won against LGD. So FPX and AL, not the best teams, but they, you know, I think those games were really close. And, you know, the top esports has, you know, thrown games before. If, if we get a focused top esports, yeah, I mean, they should really win um, easily in this matchup, um, as also supported by, you know, the EGPM differences in all lanes except for the mid lane. Surprisingly, UCAL has been playing pretty well. Um, so I think UCAL definitely needs to be included if you are playing the big underdog um, stack in Thunder Talk. Um, but, you know, I think top esports really should win this probably eight out of 10 times. Um, for top esports, though, I like Jackie Love quite a bit tonight. Um, for that reason, just based on the EGPM metrics and everything else. And also 1XN starting, who knows what that's going to do in terms of the, the bottom lane chemistry there. Um, so I like Jackie Love to take an advantage of that situation. Um, so Jackie Love captain, I think it's going to be popular, but I like, I like that still. Jackie Love to perform well tonight. In terms of the kill upside, yeah, I mean, top esports, as you know, like... They have the the potential to go off and then be the you know be the optimal stack as the primary stack you know in the lineup. Um, going up against Thunder Talk, I think Thunder Talk is about mediocre in terms of kill pace. How how they they would like to play, um, and with one XN starting, I think that helps top esports kill upside. I think one XN is one XN is a little more aggressive. Um and um, going for kills and all that. Um, and I do think that will produce a lot more, not a lot more, but you know, some more kill upside for this matchup. So I like that for top esports, but also for you know, Thunder Talk as well to be able to score well if somehow they pull off an upset. But like I said, I think I'm just gonna use a lot of top esports in this uh, on this slate. And then BLG is probably gonna be the most popular stack on this slate, I think just based on the favorable matchup that they have. Obviously, BLG coming off of big, um, you know, second place finish in the MSI has been rolling over opponents. They have won, they have won against OMG, RA, and ED, EDG, which was very impressive. Um, the biggest advantage in, in lanes goes to June in that jungle. June over Ning is a, is a mismatch. <laughs> Ning is one of the worst junglers in the LPL, at least from last last split. You saw Ning had the lowest EGPM. Um, now this this split he's been performing a bit bit better. Um, but you see that game history, the the opponent history for Ning and UP, you know what is AL and FPX and WE. So not the best teams. WE is a good team. But AL and FPX have been very, very underwhelming this season, uh, this split. So I don't, I'm not really impressed with their numbers. And even then, even, even, even after playing those opponents, Ning's EGPM is low and lower than uh, June by quite a bit. I mean, I think the EGPM difference was plus 65 still. So, I mean, BLG even after playing EDG. Um, and then RA Leon actually has been playing well. So uh, I'm very impressed with June's performance uh, so thus far in the split. So I, I do think June must be included in your core stack, um, even the captain consideration based on the how the game script goes. Um, so yeah, I, I like BLG quite a bit tonight as well, but I do think they will be the most popular stacks out there amongst all the lineups in DFS. In terms of kill upside, yeah, BLG has been playing fast. Now they played against, yeah, like OMG plays tends to play faster. RA and EDG not so much. RA maybe this split a little bit, but EDG not so much. So this is very surprising. 
Lee Pleasant. <laughs> I think BLG likes to play fast. That's the that's it. Like that's the end of the conversation. Um, I think BLG is playing fast. I think BLG is a great pick on the slate. Great stack. Um, BLG probably should be owned in a lot of lineups. Um, but like I said, the ownership leverage is not quite there because I mean they'll be very highly owned. All right, KT versus Gen G is an interesting one. Um, the same starting fives from last split, you know, should start here again tonight. Um, I know KT actually got Gen G's number. Um, I, th I believe in the last split, in the spring split. Um, so I do think that will actually motivate Gen G to beat KT, you know, a little more than without that motivation. Um, just playing the motivation narrative as this is the first game for both uh for Gen G as well. Um and then for KT, this is a second game and they played against HLE in their first series. And looking at the metrics, I was not I was not impressed. I think I put it here. I was not impressed with KT's you know first series against HLE. HLE actually out outperformed KT in that matchup except they just lost. Um made some bad mis bad mistakes and I um, really do think HLE deserved to win that one, but KT did. So given all of that, given the metrics um, that actually were not as great as I thought KT's, KT would be to start this to start the spring split with, um, I just think Genji should really win this. Um, I think it's, this is a smash spot for Genji. So. I like Genji quite a bit tonight. I, I like I like the I like the spot for them. Um in terms of the matchup, um, I believe Chovy, you know, is, is probably the number one target for me at least, just based on that matchup against BDD. All right, last matchup on the slate is the other LCK matchup, T1 versus HLE. I talked about HLE, how they were a little uh they were they actually performed, outperformed my expectations. Um, in that matchup against KT earlier this week. Um, so based on that, I think HLE definitely has a shot um, against T1. T1 unfortunately lost, um, had a bad ending to the MSI, I believe. Um, and they, it's time for them to regroup and, you know, start the spring split hot. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But T1 you know, really should win this just based on what I saw last last split. I mean, last split, T1 was dominant over HLE. HLE struggled a lot, you know, given their new roster and everything at the beginning of the last split. But toward the end of the split, HLE actually had pretty good team chemistry and all that going on. Um, but whereas T1, you know, having brought back all the five starters from last season after the Worlds, um, you know, they've been playing really well. Um, even in the MSI, I mean, they played pretty well, but they just did not meet the expectations because they just did not win the whole thing. So I do think T1 is still a very good team, elite team um, that has the roster to be able to beat HLE and, you know, on any given day, really. Um, but HLE definitely has a shot just based on what I saw last series. So is there going to be some off season or like a break rust for T1's players? Yeah, maybe. Um, which could, you know, do some favors for HLE, but at the end of the day, I'm going to have to go with T1 for my prediction. So and in terms of kill upside between the two LCK matchups, T1 played really pretty fast last split. So I I lean um, that T1 HLE matchup would produce more kills. But, you know, I think KT having played that one game, I don't know. This is a, this is a good question. I think um, KT liked to play, uh, push the pace a little bit. HLE kind of... Um, dictated the pace of that game knowing that they had the jungle control a little more than KT and HLE played like to like like to play a little bit slower that tells me that tells me that Genji is actually at a good spot because I think HLE brought down KT's pace but now KT going up against Genji I think that pace will be notched up a little bit 
and then Gen G. So yeah, I, I like Gen G amongst the four LCK teams probably the best. Um, and also it's a closer matchup, so there will be some ownership leverage to be able to kind of take advantage of. Um, so far, like over the last couple of days, um, just just a simple thought, um, overarching thought on the DFS League of Legends DFS slates, um, that has the LCK and LPL combined. So far, it's been one one LPL team and then one LCK team stacks um, that have took it down in, on both days. So I do think um, just based on the current meta, um, there has been some low uh, kill games in the LPL um, that are around the LCK range. So um, no more of, I guess, like, lck in general is going to be lower in kills yeah i mean it's it, it's probably going to happen still but not to the to the to the extent that it was in the last split i do think it is viable now to play some lck teams and stacks um just based on their predictions and matchups and all that kill upside um but you know i think that's an interesting kind of conversation to go through um, so far, like I said, two for two, LCK team has been involved in the optimal lineups. Um, and, and in ter terms of kill upside, there has not been that much of a difference between LPL and, LPL and LCK games. So I just wanted to point that out um, just for as an overarching strategy from DFS uh, lineup building standpoint. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, like my son, like like my son said, uh, hit the like button below and then subscribe to our channel. Until then, until the next video, I hope you guys have a good one and make some money and good luck out there. Sorry this video was kind of late. Thanks. Bye.